Hi everybody, Greg Roark here, Director of STEM Education at Redbird Flight Simulations. And today I want to cover something here that perplexes some people sometimes, and that has to do with why isn't my airplane flying the way that I think it's supposed to? Well, I would ask, when is the last time you calibrated your machine? Calibration is one of those things that we have to do periodically on any of our simulators to make them fly correctly. Everything inside the computers that we, that we use here for our simulators, there are various sensors, there are potentiometers, accelerometers, all of these things that, that every time that we use it can become misaligned. And there's no real rhyme or reason to it, with the exception of the fact that we have noticed that the more a machine is used, the, the more often that perhaps it should be calibrated. When do you know if you need to calibrate your machine? Well, if you see your brake light flashing periodically or your rudder's not working uh, correctly, or if you notice perhaps that your airplane just simply won't seem to fly straight on its own, then it's probably time to calibrate that unit. Coming from a school where we had a room full of these simulators, I would calibrate my desktop units every day. And the reason being is because my students would be sawing away at the controls of these things for six to eight hours a day. And despite my best efforts, sometimes you would have students that would grab a hold of the yoke and look like they're killing snakes in a bucket. Well, every time that you make a real jerky movement on the yoke or, or your throttle quadrant or stabbing your rudder pedals, then there's the potential for misalignment. That misalignment needs to be corrected through calibration. So I'm going to walk you through that here today and understand that the calibration procedures that I'm going to show you, you can use those with any of our simulators, whether it be a desktop unit like the J Velocity Edition or one of our full motion platforms like the FMX or the MCX. They all are calibrated the same way. And with that, let me show you how it's done. So from your simulator, you're going to take your keyboard. The first thing you're going to do is if you happen to be in a flight, you're going to stop your flight. It doesn't have to happen from a flight. You can actually do it uh, to calibrate your systems whenever you fire your machines up. So it doesn't have to happen this way. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit the red escape button to stop the flight. And then as soon as I do that, I'm going to hit the Windows key. So in the lower left-hand corner of your keyboard, there's a button, it's called the Windows key. I'm going to hit that because this process actually happens through Windows. It doesn't happen through the operating system of the SIM, it actually happens through Windows. Now, let me show you how this works. When you push the Windows button on your keyboard, you'll notice this little window will pop up here on your screen. It'll say Redbird Essentials. Uh, and also notice that I have uh, blown up my cursor here to make it a little bit easier to see. So what we're going to do is we come here where you see the little icon here for joystick calibration. From there, you're going to left click from underneath your touchpad. This brings up this portion here. And this pulls up a screen here called Game Controllers. Under Game Controllers, you'll see J Rudder and you'll see J. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to double click on the line that's highlighted in blue there where it says J Rudder. And we're going to left click, double click here. When we double click on that, it pulls up J Rudder Properties. So from this screen, we're going to do a couple things. First of all, we're going to go to Settings. We are going to Reset to Default and then calibrate. This will bring up here a calibration wizard. We're going to left click here on next. Once we have next, we're going to find this, the, the center point here for our rudders. Before we go any further, I want to draw a distinction. Yes, we are on the rudders section here of calibration, but the first thing that we're going to calibrate are the brakes. Yes, I understand that the brakes are connected to the rudder pedals, but the brakes are not listed on the actual calibration screen, but the brakes get calibrated first. And I will also tell you this, they're the trickiest. Buckle up, here we go. Now, before we go any further on calibrating the rudders, I wanna make sure that I make a distinction. 
When we start calibrating the rudders, we don't start with the actual rudders, we start with the brakes. I know that it's a minor distinction to be sure, but it doesn't list it on the actual box. So when you click rudders, know that the first thing that you're going to calibrate are going to be the brakes, not necessarily the rudders. And we're going to start here by calibrating the brakes because of all the calibration that you're going to do, it's probably the trickiest. Because of that, I'm actually going to use the rudder pedals up here, which I just put here on my knee, and I'm going to show you here, sort of with my hands, how we do this, so that you can see what needs to happen to get them calibrated properly. Okay, back to the screen. So the first thing that it says here is find center point. And so in order to find center point here on the brakes, all you do is you just take your hands and you just kind of give them a little flex right there. And all I'm doing is I'm just, just loosening them up. They're going to sit right where they're going to sit. Right there, it's perfect. From this point, we're going to hit next. Now, when we pull this screen up, one of the things that you'll notice is you'll see a box. In that box, you're going to see a plus sign. In that plus sign that you see, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to walk that plus sign along the outside of the box and hit all four corners. That's what we're going to do. Now with that, I'll show you how we're going to do it. So here, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to press the left brake. We're going to press the left brake and we're going to hold it. Then we're going to press the right brake and hold it. Then we're going to release the left brake, followed by releasing the right brake. So left brake, both brakes, release the left, release the right. Left, together, release left, release right. That's what we're going to do. And we want to walk that plus sign around that box four times. Let's take a look. So here we go. Press left, press together, release left, release right. Press left, press together, release left, release right. Press left, both together, release left, release right. Press left, press together, release left, release right. Good so far? And again, I'm showing you how to do this with my hands. You can do the same thing with your feet, but it was easier for me to show you how to do this here, I think, with my hands. So, now that you've walked that plus sign around all four corners, now comes the tricky part. We want to move that plus sign from the upper right hand corner to the center of the screen. And when it gets to the center of the screen, we need to do something in quick succession. So in order to get that plus sign to the center of the screen, we're going to press left slightly until we get it roughly centered. Then we're going to press the right pedal to bring it there into the center of the box. Once that is there in the center of the box, you are going to want to hit the next button twice. Now to do that here while I'm doing this with my hands, it's a little tricky. If you're using your feet, it's quite a bit easier, but we're going to show you how we do it. So I'm gonna press the left while I press the right. There's the center. Now I'm going to click here the next button Hang on, let me get back to the center. A little more right, there we go. Next, next. Now that may not seem like much, but you have to cycle through both of those screens, hitting the next button twice while holding that plus sign in the center of the box. So that part gets a little bit tricky. Let's go back and look at this again. So now I'm going to bring the plus sign to the left while I'm lowering it there to the right. And right about there is center. Now I'm going to click. Now I'm going to click next. 
and then next one more time while I'm still holding it. Okay, that's the hardest part. Again, you've got to walk that plus sign all the way around those four corners of that box. What happens if you don't get up close to the box? In other words, what happens if you don't put enough pressure on it? Well, if you don't put enough pressure on it, then your plus sign is going to get away from the corners and you're not going to have the brakes that you think you're going to have whenever you need to either stop or taxi or turn. So just know that it has that the closer that you walk that plus sign to those lines around the edges of the box, the better your calibration is going to be. Now, let's take a look at the next one. Now for this one here on the Z axis of the J, we are actually going to be using the rudder pedals. So with this one, we're going to notice the movement along the Z axis here by moving the rudder pedals, the full travel of the rudders. So here, we're gonna go full left, full right, full left, full right. And again, we're pressing the rudder pedals all the way down. Not the brakes, but the rudder pedals. And this one, I like to do this one probably about six times. And then we stop where the rudder pedals are in the center. Then we click Next. Now, to save the calibration, you just simply click Finish. And there we go. When you click Finish, what you want to see is you want to see that plus sign in the upper right-hand corner of that box. If you don't see the plus sign in the upper right-hand corner of that box, you're going to need to go back and you're going to need to do it again because it's not calibrated correctly. Also, you'll notice here at your Z axis, this is going to be your rudders. And I always like to test them to make sure that the line pretty much disappears here with left rudder and with right rudder, it goes all the way into the deep blue. So I've got full left rudder, full right rudder. I have my brakes calibrated here properly because I know that that plus sign is in the upper right hand corner. Now I simply cursor down here. I want to click apply and then I want to click OK. So now that we've calibrated the rudder pedals, let me show you how to calibrate the other controls. The first control that we're going to calibrate is going to be the yoke. In order to calibrate the yoke, it requires a test very similar to making sure in the airplane that your flight controls are free and correct. We are going to run the box, as they call it, where we start with full left aileron, full aft pressure, full right aileron with aft pressure. Then we're going to go with forward pressure, turn it exactly the same way that we do in our pre-flight check. So let's see what that looks like. To begin the calibration of the other controls, you're going to highlight where it says J, then you're going to double click on that line. It brings you up with a properties window very similar to the one that you used with your brakes and your rudders. Same procedure. We're going to click Settings, Reset to Default, Calibrate. It brings up the Calibration Wizard. From the Calibration Wizard, we're going to click Next. Now we're going to find the center point. So remember how we found the center point with the brakes. We just wanted to make sure that they were in the center. Simple enough. We want to do the same thing with the yoke. In order to do that, all we're going to do is we're going to press on the yoke just a little bit, let it find its center, and that's good. We just want to make sure that it's not hung up somewhere or stuck in some position that won't allow this to calibrate correctly. After we've found the center point, we're going to click Next. Now then, you'll notice that box with the plus sign. Look familiar? I'll bet it does. So remember, in order to walk that plus sign around the corners of this window here for the yoke, remember what I said. We're going to start with left aileron and then hold that left aileron with back pressure. While we're holding the back pressure, we're going to roll right aileron and then forward pressure, forward pressure to the lock, then back to the left. And we do that a minimum of four times. Let's see how it looks. Once I roll the controls to the left, you'll notice the plus sign goes here to the corner. Now I'm going to pull aft pressure here to the stops. 
Now I'm going to roll right. Now you'll notice that the plus sign kind of jumped out there a little bit. That's okay, don't worry about that yet. Now I'm gonna go full forward, then rotate left, hold it left while pulling back, while pulling back, rotate right. Now I'm gonna go full forward while holding right. Now roll left while keeping the pressure forward, back, right, forward, left, back, right, forward, left, back, right, forward, left. Now, I'm going to let go. I'm going to let it find its center right here. Once I do that, I go back to the keyboard. At this point, I'm going to click Next. Okay, now I'm done with the yoke. Now I want to move to my throttle quadrant. That's what's coming up next, so I click Next. So the first thing that you see is something called X rotation. Sometimes people think a little too much about the axis and the rotation, about what does what. Just know that the order of things that you do them from the left side to the right side is going to work. So the first thing that we're going to do here on the J velocity is that we're going to uh, calibrate the throttle or the energy management lever as we call it and then the mixture. Those are going to be the two that we calibrate here on the J. So here we are in the X rotation. Now all I'm going to do is to take my throttle and I'm going to go full throttle to close. Open, close, open, close, open, close. Then I'm going to put it back in the middle. Then I click Next. Now it's going to ask me about the Y rotation, which is mixture. I go mixture. I go full rich, full lean, full rich, full lean, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, middle. Now I'm ready to click Next. Calibration complete, click Finish. Now you'll notice something. As you look here at the window, you'll see the plus sign dead center in the box. That is good. Now then, we look at the X rotation. This is your throttle. I flex this a couple times because I want to make sure that here, when the throttle is fully closed, that my line goes away, and then it goes full into the blue here as I go full forward, come back to half. Now with mixture, same thing. I go full forward and back, forward, back. That looks pretty good right there. I just put it to somewhere about half. Now then, I think I like that, so I'm going to click Apply. Now, once I've clicked Apply, I click OK. And with that, you are done with your calibration here of your J Velocity Desktop Flight Simulator. You can click OK. And with that, that turns you back here into whatever page you were on before you went to hit your Windows button. And in this case, what we're looking at here is we're looking at our dispatch page. So, that is how you calibrate any of our Redbird flight simulators. We calibrate the brakes and the rudders first, then we calibrate the yoke and your throttle quadrant. Remember, on a TD or, or like some of the multi-engine uh, aircraft that we have, all of that X rotation and X axes, all of those are going to be a little bit different so just recognize that as you go through that when you get to the throttle quadrant portion of that, that can vary somewhat in, in how that looks just because of the differences that you may have. Uh, for instance, here we don't have prop. So if you had a prop here, there would be another bar that you would also need to calibrate with that. If you're in a multi-engine aircraft, you're going to have six of those that you're going to do, whether that's going to be throttle, prop, and mixture on some of the multi-engine aircraft that we have. So just know that it's going to look a little bit different on the throttle quadrant portion on each of these simulators. And so with that, it's simply that easy. Once you do this a few times, you're going to find that you can actually get through this pretty quick. I was able to calibrate most of our desktop simulators in just under three minutes each. I was getting pretty good at it, but then again, I was recalibrating 12 of them a day, so you get used to it. Anyway, there you go. I hope that helps, and we'll see you on the next video.